guys, so today I thought I'd do a little versus of the Topicals Faded Serum and the Regimen Lab Level Serum, which are two great ingredient products, ingredients, products for brightening up skin. Um, so I thought I would do a little comparison of the two. So in my opinion, these are two of the best brightening products, but they end up being totally, uh, totally different in terms of who might need them. So, okay, let me start. So the Topicals Faded Serum for Dark Spots and Discoloration. I'm going off the most recent ingredient list because they did make a couple changes. They got rid of coconut oil in there and they added a fragrance masking ingredient in there to get rid of that sulfur smell. Um, so I'm going from the most recent ingredient list. Um, so they call us a hyperpigmentation safe serum that visibly reduces stubborn discoloration, post blemish marks, scars, and spots for all ethnicities and skin shades. And the Regimen Lab Level Serum, Happier Skin Correlates with Smoother Skin. We use a nine active ingredient in this in the level to fight short-term and long-term hyperpigmentation. Below the surface levels, actives work to reduce inflammation, improve firming, and prevent damage. So, my first criteria is packaging with this, and they're both totally different packaging. These, they use a metal tube, and uh, the Regimen Lab uses a um, plastic bottle. So, uh, to be honest, the metal tube is a little bit messy because if you accidentally squeeze it just a little bit too much and then you go to open it, you get a lot more out than you wanted. Um, so, it's a little bit iffy, but the Regimen Lab, is their pump is pretty decent, although sometimes I get a little bit more than I want. So, But overall, both packaging are effective and efficient to protect the ingredients, so no issues with that. Uh, in terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, both of these products are free from drying types of alcohol. So we've got another tie. We get to fragrance. Obviously, I just said it, the new version of this contains um, ethylene brazolate as well as zinc renoliate to mask the sulfur scent. If you use the original formula, you notice it had a strong sulfurish smell to it. It dissipated quickly, but it bothered some people. It didn't really bother me at all, but... So they decided to add some light fragrance to mask it. I'm not, I'd rather just deal with the sulfur smell than added fragrance, but whatever. Um, and then the Regimen Labs has no fragrance ingredients and no real scent to it. So Regimen Labs get the point here. Uh, in terms of ease of use, so I'll just do a little bit on each hand, but both are very easy to use. So the Topicals Faded has more of a uh, lotion-y texture to it. Not very messy. Well, the regimen, this is almost empty, but uh, has more of a liquid texture to it. There we go. So the Topicals ends up feeling more like a moisturizer. Um, so so the Topicals, might, the formula might be a little bit more geared towards drier skin types. Well, the Regimen Labs feels like a liquidy serum. Both are just fine, easy to use, but I prefer the texture of the Regimen Labs a little bit more then the Topicals Faded. Um, and then Topicals Faded, both of these I recommend using them in your evening routine uh, before your moisturizer. Um, cert some people recommend using them morning and evening. The Regimen Labs, they recommend using this morning and evening. Personally, I think you're better off using this at night. And then instead of using this in your morning routine, use a vitamin C serum, which will also help with brightness and things like that. So. Um, in terms of ease of use, I recommend the Regimen Labs. I just like the liquid texture a little bit easier. It smooths over skin and absorbs a little bit nicer. So, okay, so right now Regimen Lab is up two points out of nine. So let's talk about the ingredients. So for topicals, in terms of beneficial ingredients, I literally just listed the beneficial ingredients, the brightening ingredients, the good ingredients, and then counted them for each of these. So... The Topicals has 16 beneficial ingredients. We've got niacinamide, tranexamic acid, great for brightening up skin, shea butter, jojoba seed oil, alpha arbutin, kojic acid, dipalmitate, turmeric, chroma bright, azelaic acid, licorice root, melatonin, centella asiatica, vitamin E, arginine, lecithin, and soybean sterols. And most of those are ones, ingredients that are focused on brightening, such as the tranexamic acid, alpha arbutin, kojic, turmeric, chromabrite, chromabrite. Um, so 16 impressive ingredients in here. So the Regimen Lab has 12, so not quite as much. So in the Regimen Labs, we've got 
niacinamide, we've got betaine, we've got tranexamic acid, we've got acetylglucosamine, we've got alpha arbutin, sepi white MSH, which is like a patented ingredient, licorice root extract, then we've got licorice root salt, we've got curcumin, we've got hexyl resorcinol, and then lipochromin 6, and then lecithin, so 12. So they're pretty close, but the topicals has just four more ingredients uh, that are beneficial. Although, in terms of the regimen labs, all of these are really good brightening ingredients. The topicals, they threw in some centella, vitamin E, some other good ingredients, but not really ingredients that are focused on like brightening. But still, topicals gets the point. Okay, in terms of acneogenic ingredients, topicals has six different acneogenic ingredients and that is even giving the fact that they took the coconut oil out so in terms of acneogenic ingredients with the topicals we've got glycerol stearate we've got jojoba seed oil we've got squalane vitamin e cetera alcohol and cetera 20 so six uh for acneogenic ingredients with the regimen labs zero that's awesome so acne prone skin you probably instantly know which product you're gonna want to go for so let's see. So regimen lab now is up one, two points. So, okay. In terms of cruelty-free status, they're both cruelty-free. It's a tie. That is awesome. In terms of performance, so I found the topicals faded seems to work better on newer hyperpigmentation or pie. Helps generally brighten up the skin, kind of hydrating, which is nice if you have drier skin. Um, but seems to be shine most with new hyperpigmentation spots and things like that. The Regimen Lab, I was really impressed. I found this worked great on older areas of hyperpigmentation and melasma that are very difficult to help brighten and treat. It can take a lot of dedication and time and sunscreen to keep that at bay. Um, yeah, and I love the fact that one pump is enough for my entire face and neck. So in terms of performance, I think the Regimen Labs has the point. However, if you have new hyperpigmentation... You might want to go towards the faded, older hyperpigmentation. You might want to go towards the regimen lab. Uh, in terms of price, so the topicals is $38 for 50 milliliters, which ends up being 76 cents per milliliter you use. While the regimen lab is 30 milliliters for $42, which ends up being about double a dollar forty per milliliter. Although a little bit of this goes a lot longer than the same amount of this. So that's something to consider, but... Um, in terms of price, topicals has a point there. And then uh, with the total, so this is out of a total of nine points, the topicals got five and the regimen lab got seven points. So they're both wonderful for different customers, different issues. Um, both are going to help overall with brightening up your skin. It just depends on what your main skin issues are and if you have acne prone skin and then price and availability and things like that. So... Um, anyway, they're both wonderful, so you can't really go wrong with either. It just depends on what you specifically need. Um, so anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if anybody's had a chance to try either of these or both of these, uh, what your thoughts are. So leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.